Income Tax 2023-2024. When do you recapture maker's depreciation? Get ready and some coffee. Because if you try telling an IRS auditor a joke about taxes, they won't depreciate it. First, a word from our sponsor. Yeah, actually, we're sponsoring ourselves on this one. Because apparently the merchandisers, they don't want to be seen with us. But... But that's okay, whatever. Because our merchandise is, is better than their stupid stuff anyways. Like our crunchy numbers is my cardio product line. Now, I'm not saying that subscribing to this channel, crunching numbers with us, will make you thin, fit, and healthy or anything. However, it does seem like it worked for her. Just saying. So, you know, subscribe, hit the bell thing, and buy some merchandise. So you can make the world a better place by sharing your accounting instruction exercise routine. If you would like a commercial free experience, consider subscribing to our website at accountinginstruction.com or accountinginstruction.thinkific.com. Most of this information comes from publication 946, How to Depreciate Property, Section 179, Deduction, Special Depreciation Allowance, Makers, Listed Property, and More, Tax Year 2023, which you can find on the IRS website at irs.gov, irs.gov. Remember, in the first half of the income tax formula, basically a funny income statement. Most income statements having income minus expenses resulting in net income. Here, having income minus various deductions resulting in taxable income, the sole proprietorship schedule C ultimately rolling into line one income of the formula, noting though, the schedule C itself basically an income statement. Having business income minus business expenses resulting in, in essence, net business income, which is what rolls in from the schedule C to line one income of our income tax formula, the formula outlining the calculation for the form 1040 of which we see the first page here, the schedule C ultimately rolling into line number eight, additional income from schedule one. This is the schedule one, additional income and adjustments to income part number one, additional income schedule C rolling into line three business income or loss. This is a Schedule C, profit or loss, which is basically a format of an income statement. Having income minus expenses, we're looking at the expenses here, usually having the most different components within it. Some of those expenses more difficult than others, like depreciation, where as we saw in a prior presentation, even if we're on a cash-based method, the IRS will force us to do an accrual thing. So for example, if we had a $10,000 piece of equipment, we would like to just expense it as equipment expense because that would be one, the easiest thing to do, and two, give us the largest deduction as soon as possible. But the IRS, in accordance and in alignment with generally accepted accounting principles, so, so the theory is sound in principle, wants us to put it on the books as an asset and allocate the cost over its useful life. Now, the Schedule C is an income statement. Assets are balance sheet accounts, so we don't have a balance sheet, so we have to use a depreciation schedule, which gives us the balance sheet accounts of property, plants, and equipment, equipment, depreciable assets, accumulated depreciation, and you know the book value, and it'll also allow us to calculate the current period's depreciation expense. So that's great, but then the tax code will usually allow us an upfront depreciation possibly, and these are the 179 deductions and special depreciation, which oftentimes could be almost, if not completely, the entire amount of, in our example, the $10,000, allowing us basically to expense the $10,000 as though we just expensed it upfront, but instead of equipment expense, calling it depreciation expense, leading to the question, well, why didn't you just let me expense it in the first place? It would have been easier. And the answer is because the tax code's complex because what they're trying to do is do the right thing from an accrual standpoint and then they adjust it from the lobbyist standpoint and whatnot for political reasons. And that's where the special depreciation and whatnot comes in. And then anything that has not been consumed in, in terms of the adjusted basis uh, for the depreciable property will then be allocated according to the normal rules of depreciation, aligning to generally accepted accounting principles for the most part using the maker's depreciation, which for most small business property 
is is usually like a double declining half year convention. Okay. So when do you recapture maker's depreciation? <clears throat> so when you dispose of property that you depreciated using makers, any gain on the dep- on the disposition is generally recaptured, included in income as ordinary income up to the amount of the depreciation previously allowed or allowable for the property. Depreciation for this purpose includes the following. All right, so let's see if we can recap that here. What does it mean that we have to recapture it? Now, if you, can, if you understand this conceptually, the calculations and the rules will be a lot easier to basically understand and implement then. And of course, software helps with these kind of things, but you wanna be able to understand the concept so that you can deconstruct the software and make sure that the software is calculating uh, everything correctly. So the general idea with depreciation is we're allocating the cost over the useful life of the property. So, so what you can imagine that we have then what I would call the potential energy, the potential deduction of the property. In our example, it was $10,000. As I depreciate it, I'm using up that $10,000 and I'm getting a benefit as I do that until it goes down to zero and then I get no further benefit. Now, as I consume it, you can think of the adjusted basis going down And in theory, if this was perfectly done from an accounting standpoint, that book value or adjusted basis would line up to the fair market value of the property at any given time. Now, that can't actually happen in practice because it's it's just a guess. It's just basically an estimate that we are doing. But that's just basically the idea that if you sold it like in the middle of its useful life, in theory, you would sell it for its book value and have no gain or loss. And that would be perfect. That would be what would happen basically in a perfect world. Obviously, we can't perfectly get the estimate correctly. So what happens when we sell the property, we end up with either a gain or a loss. Now, it turns out when you're selling equipment in any depreciable property other than real estate, it's likely that you're going to end up with a gain rather than a loss because of over depreciation. In other words, real estate might end up with a gain just because of where it's located. Even though the building depreciates, the location may result in the value of the building going up. So that's why real estate has its own its own complications, basically. Uh, But with equipment, forklifts and any other kind of equipment, they are going to decline in value. You're not typically going to buy a forklift use it for five years and then sell the forklift for more than you purchased it for. That's unlikely to happen. It's going to decline uh, in value. So the only question is, is my depreciation keeping up with the decline in the value? Normally, if we use a 179 deduction in a special depreciation, we will have radically decreased the basis of the forklift past what its fair market value would be. So in other words, if I bought the forklift and I was allowed a 179 deduction and I fully depreciated the $10,000 forklift in like a year, then next year, if I sold the forklift, I'm certainly going to have a gain on it because it's not now depreciated. It's not, it's not worth nothing at that point in time. So I'm going to have a gain. So the, what I'm trying to point out here is that 179 and special deductions will almost surely result in this problem of having a gain that's only due to over depreciating. And right right now we're focused on makers. Makers has a similar issue. Makers is using usually a double declining balance, which is in accordance with generally accepted accounting principles, unlike like a 179 deduction, but it's still an accelerated method, which runs the, 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 the risk of over depreciating. Okay, so what's the problem with that? What if I over depreciate it? Then when I sell it, I have a gain. No big deal. That's the the sales price minus the cost. You have a gain. Cool. That's just going to be income. But the problem is that usually when we sell this kind of property, it's capital. It's a capital gain and capital gains are usually taxed at more favorable tax rates. So, and that doesn't seem fair because you, the only reason you have a gain is because you over depreciated it. And when you over depreciated it, you got an expense or deduction that is in accordance with the ordinary income or the higher tax rates. So that's the problem. So that means that any gain that you have is probably going to have to be recaptured, meaning it's going to be included in ordinary income rather than the more favorable capital gain income because 
the gain is a result of over depreciating. But if you sell the thing for more than you bought it for, then that part of the gain you would think might be at the more favorable rates like capital gains, but that's only likely to happen with like real estate. Okay, that's the general idea. So any section, so depreciation for this purpose includes the following, any section 179 deduction claim on the property, any deduction under section 179B of the Internal Revenue Code for capital costs to comply with Environmental Protection Agency sulfur regulations, any deduction under section 179C of the Internal Revenue Code for certain qualified refinery property placed in service after August 8th, 2005 and before January 1st, 2014. So any deduction under section 179D of the Internal Revenue Code for certain energy efficient commercial building property placed in service after December 31st, 2005. Any deduction under section 179E of the Internal Revenue Code for qualified advanced mine safety equipment property placed in service after December 20th, 2006 and before January 1st, 2018. So any deduction for section 190 of the Internal Revenue Code for removal of barriers to the uh, disabled and the elderly. Any deduction under uh, section 193 of the Internal Revenue Code for uh, tertiary injections. Uh, any special depreciation allowance previously allowed or allowable for the property unless you elected not to claim it. So there is no recapture for residential rental and non-residential real property unless that property is qualified property for which you claimed a special depreciation allowance. So for more information on depreciation recapture, we can see uh, publication 544.